sitting here with Jim Charles, the chairman of NABBY UK. Firstly, congratulations on being voted in as chairman. And that's been, uh, been a long time coming. <laughs> um, now, I spoke to Val yesterday. I know the both of you have been involved in NABBA um, officially and unofficially for a very long time. How did you get uh, involved with NABBA to begin with? Well, I mean, basically, I was running a gym, uh, and obviously, um, I supported the uh, different events that NABBA were doing. Um, and it's just a matter of circumstances where it carries on and on, and you get more and more involved, just like any other sport. Yep. Um, and then you try and advance, um, you train people, and they win the universe. I've won the universe with a guy and girls, and lots of girls have trained and won the Britain. And it goes from there, you just unfortunately get more and more involved till you finish up longer than being the chairman. <laughs> well, I think, uh, I think there's probably plenty of people around the world who know that. Um, you know, when, yeah, when someone's needed to step in, you've got to step up to the plate. So um, maybe give us a little bit of, uh, bit of history around NABBA, how did it start? Well, I mean, basically it started long before me, about nine years before I got involved. Although I was quoted in magazines and uh, articles, that uh, I was the guy that was organising the universe from here on in. Yeah. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, I'd have been nine when it first started, so I don't think I was that clever. <laughs> but uh, there you go. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've only been in it 56 years. Only 56 so I'm years. Just, I'm and just getting to grips with it uh, at the moment. <laughs> so uh, so NABBA, NABBA was formed in 1950 by... Uh, members of the Health and Strength League, among others? Well, we kicked off in 1948, but that wasn't NABBA. Um, it was the first ever universe. Uh, and then in 1950, uh, they formed uh, this NABBA organisation. Yeah. Um, with Oscar Hardenstam and George Greenwood and quite a few others. Uh, we had a council, council of members, but I'm for council only in name only. Yeah. Um, then it went on, and then we had all these area reps, which I am. Uh, so you're ten. also the area rep for yes, which area? I'm area rep for the Midlands. For the Midlands, and that's quite a quite a large it's area. The biggest area. The yeah. biggest. Yeah. yeah. Uh, although a lot of it's rural. Yeah. Uh, and then consequently, um, we have ten area reps, uh, which now form the committee. Yep. Uh, in in a sense, they, whether they realise it or not, they're sort of directors mm. and are responsible. But I don't think they all register with that, but, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, anyway, they do their area shows. And um, I travel around to all the area shows pretty well. Mm. Unless, like next year, where there's three area shows on one day, oh, okay. which will be damned awkward for me to attend all three. <laughs> but there we go. But that happens occasionally. Yeah. Um, we, we, we get that in Australia as well. Yeah. We get state shows on the same day, so we can't be everywhere. But basically... Uh, the whole thing uh, collates into the Britain, which is an incredible show, and then from there we go on to the world and then to the universe. So, um, talking about the universe, then, what's it like being part of the Nabi Universe experience? Well, I think it's tremendous. The only thing is, it's a damn lot of work for me and my wife. Uh, in my case, um, when we couldn't get any sponsorship, I was the guy that had to uh, uh, be involved in all the sponsorships. So I'm. Uh, I've been involved with that for a long time, uh, yep. although people said um, at a meeting in Birmingham that uh, and Mr. Ivan Dunbar, who was there at the time, said it's, it's difficult, we're not going to be able to get sponsorship. Uh, so I went out, I come back with 15,000 and moved the show to the ICC, which cost £181 million, pounds, yep. to the best venue of all time. Um, and since then, I've been getting the sponsorship from them. In the meantime, I also um, arrange all the stage signs, drive a van, yep. load the stage, so unload the stage. Very, very hands-on. You know, so the, I guess the, yeah. the, the NABBA experience, the, the NABBA universe experience for 
someone like you, Jim, would be one of... Uh, a lot of work. A, a lot of work, a labour of love. Uh, Whereas for other people, it's, you know, it's the highs and lows of competing. Yeah. You, you see all of the backstage preparation, all yes. of the hard work and dedication that goes into it. Uh, Val said you've got, I think you've got a team of about 35 volunteers who help yeah, out to run the show. Yeah. Um, and again, remembering that a lot of this is, is accomplished with volunteer efforts with uh yeah, yeah. Well, i guess we're not on a limited budget because we're not a not-for-profit association but of course uh any money that goes into sponsorship goes back into the association into running uh great events like the mr universe and mr world or the, or the world championships and the universe championships Absolutely. um so you know we're not, if, we're not if we're lucky to make a profit which we have been quite successful over the last few years because of the volume of sponsorships and the effort everybody's putting in Consequently, we're then able to send a, a really good team to the world, uh, which we provide track suits and, and yeah. expenses, which other organisations don't do. Yeah. Uh, so that's, I guess that's very important for NABRA, isn't it? You know, being athlete focused. Yeah. We want to provide the uniforms, the travel yeah. incentives. Uh, we want to create that, that sense of family. And we, uh, we, we, we talk about this, but NABRA being a family, a global family. Um, and I guess you're, in a, in a sense, you're. Uh, so the, the father of the family. Oh, yeah. <laughs> granddad of the, the family. The granddad of the family. Yeah. The patriarch. And uh, which means then Val would be uh, the the mother of Nabba at the moment. Well, actually, without Val... Without, uh, without I'm not without sure if she liked of, that, that comparison. But well, without the back of a Val, I'd be nothing anyway. So behind every good man is a great woman. Yes. Yep. Well, in this case, oh, I'm not sure. I think uh, Val often uh, is often the, 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 the face that people see. Yes. So... Uh, yeah, maybe. Well, she's prettier than me. So. <laughs> I won't argue with that. Um, where do you see NABBA going in the next five to ten years? Well, I can't. After what you've just seen today and uh, all the other things we do, our Britain and all our radio shows, you know, we have a few blips like anybody else. Um, but at the moment, bodybuilding seems to be absolutely booming again. Mm. Um, Maybe we had a bit of a blip a couple of years or three years ago because of the financial situation. Mm. I mean, it seems, uh, prices, yeah. uh, it seems like the rest of the world was in the same boat. But we've rallied through it, in, including my gym, mm. uh, seemed to have a dip. Um, and now we're booming again, you know, so uh, it's a bit like football. Um, one minute you've got a, a team like Liverpool who are absolutely, people are raving about, and then you've got Man United who are they raving about, and now Man United have dipped, Liverpool yep. have dipped, and along come Chelsea, and yep. I mean, bodybuilders are the same. Uh, well, I know definitely from a, from Australia, we're at you know, at saturation point, bodybuilding couldn't be more popular there yeah. at the moment. Um, well, I think we're the same. And it, it's, not, it's not just hardcore bodybuilding, it's also, you know, people just getting into training and fitness yeah, and yeah, wanting to, to yeah, improve their lives yeah. and I think that's that's important to remember that you know where NABBA started was the health and strength league yeah, and that wasn't yeah. about bodybuilding that was about well, you know, physical excellence I yes, think as yes, Malcolm Wyatt yeah, put it yeah. um, bodybuilding was a, was a part of the health and strength league but it certainly wasn't the overall focus it was about being healthy and strong and, and in, you know, improving your well-being and your quality of life and that's still very much our mandate well, today well I mean we want in the early stages uh, we were called physical culture yeah. and we actually uh, appeared in a health and efficiency a magazine mm. where we had the nudist camps all being advertised <laughs> and, and things and we just had it like I'm not, I'm not sure if uh, nudist camps and NABBA would really gel today no no, no probably no. Um, well, you get to see more in the new discount. <laughs> there you go. Um, with, uh, I guess, you know, go, going back as far as we can go, I spoke to Malcolm uh, the other day, Malcolm White, our, our NABBA historian, um, talking about you know, the, the beginnings of the Health and Strength League and the Health and Strength magazine being published from 1892 on, uh, sorry, 1898 onwards. Um, you know, so we've got 116 years of history already yeah. behind this organisation, and most people don't know that. If there was one, if there was one thing about NABBA that you wish more people would would know, or that you'd like to tell everyone, what do you think that would be? Well, it's a rule that I've always stuck by, and although people have uh, at times tried to change, that we own we hold no jurisdiction over any athlete competing wherever he wishes to compete. 
So in other words, if he competed for another organisation on Saturday and he competed for us on Sunday because he dieted, trained and got in a terrific condition, yeah. and so he's taking his opportunities because he's in that condition, that we owe no jurisdiction over him. We don't stamp him and say he's got to be this or got to be that. We don't dictate. Yeah. Only people who are, are not allowed to um, be involved in other organisations is ourselves who are the... Uh, the promoters and promoters yes, yeah, and, you've got a vested and, interest like and the and the council yeah, yeah. who, who, sh who uh, have their loyalty to the, to our organisation yeah. but no jurisdiction over the competitors so we don't ban people no we never have and that's no. that's very important because I, I know that yeah in, in the in the old days of bodybuilding the the uh, the AAU the amateur athletic union used to ban people from yes. competing in NABBA yeah. because they said that NABBA was a professional yes. organisation yeah. and you yeah. could you know but um, yeah, even today, there are still other organisations that like to suspend or ban athletes well, we've or officials or sponsors. We've got an organisation over here now that seems to be banning everything. Um, in fact, they even attacked a magazine and told him he couldn't yeah. print any of the shows or anything anymore. Yeah. And the amazing thing is, uh, in the last few months or so, they've started to add the things in that he advertise into their organization so it amazes me um, you know you, you tell a person not to give you an advertisement mm. not to cover what you're doing and then you go and do exactly what you're telling him not to do it's very confusing so uh, but i think look as as definitely as part of the global naba family we know that we've never banned athletes we never will no. ban athletes we uh we welcome people with open arms because we are a family and um, I think that's a great message to be able to tell athletes and, and yeah. also coaches and sponsors and that, that you know, we are a, a welcoming and loving family of bodybuilders and, and physical culturists. I mean, uh, I just spoke to your father, who's the international president, uh, and uh, he's asked me straight out, what do you think about this and what if this happens and that happens? And, I, and I've told him absolutely frankly, no, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not, we're not going to be involved. Uh, because... As I've explained to other, uh, there's five-a-side football and there's eleven-a-side football, yeah. and they're to two different games. So, yep. uh, in the case of the people who, who, who want to run the organisation, where they got guys in um, board shorts, in shorts, and and bathing beauties, which I was involved in for years, as we were in the early stages of the universe, um, and my ex-wife, who was, if you want to call her bathing beauty, who won the Britain in the universe. So uh, we were involved in that all those years ago. And now we moved on to a, a more trained athlete called Tom Figure. Well, actually, it's, it's through the pressure that I put on with another guy that we convinced Nava that we need to take a step back. So we stepped back to Tom Figure, which means the girls uh, are, are trained and, and look yeah. sort of uh, a little bit more uh, in condition than the yeah. average bathing duty. Yep. No, I've got anything against bathing beauties, <laughs> but I, I don't think we can involve them in with what we're doing. Yeah. And and I know that the bodybuilders are quite upset that these guys are uh, being involved in the sport where they're coming in with these Bermuda shorts on and set of abs. Yeah. Uh, and that's upset the bodybuilder who's training them now to have terrific uh, muscle development, legs, arms and whatever, you know, uh, to have a guy who just... He's in a pair of shorts with some abs. Mm. Um, and I'm not against them either. Uh, I mean, in their own uh, category, in their own organisation, um, great, but we're not involving them in our organisation because we're pure bodybuilding. Yeah. Um, even though we're sort of a little bit softer with the tone figure. Yeah. I suppose um, it's, I mean, you know, going, going on to that, that um, Talking about health and strength and, and, and women's bodybuilding, especially, you know, in, in years gone by, uh, I think in, in most organizations, there was a, a push towards um, reining in the extremeness of some of the, the, the ladies um, who were bodybuilding, because, you know, what we what we knew as NABA figure in um, you know, many years ago, and then physique, what we, yeah, what we had as physique was becoming ex very, very, very extreme. Yes. Um, and that's obviously been reined in. And now I think even the trained figure 
you know, th- those some of those girls are better conditioned than our professionals. Well, actually, you know, I, I, I was just going to say what you, where you're making that comment there that I'm now considering that we, we need to look into the trained figure it is because that's becoming a physique girl again. Yeah. Uh, which, which seems to be a situation when a girl starts to train in the early stages, and uh, we've got so many beautiful girls, mm. and then, I mean, it's only my opinion, of course, uh, and then they've trained and trained and they've gone on to train and they've increased and they've turned into that... Uh, um, extreme physique. Extreme so, physique. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think we need, we need again to take a step back. I know in the UK that you have athletic figure, yeah. toned figure, and trained figure. But the athletic or, figure has only just begun, so yeah. we're not really in gear with that. Yeah. So I'd like to, if possible, I'd like to see it take a step back yeah. and probably have a uh, toned figure and athletic figure and perhaps forget the trained figure because the trained figure of today, as you noticed yesterday, yeah. is becoming the physique of yesterday. Yeah. Um, I suppose that there will always be athletes who want to push the absolute limits of their, of their physiques well, again, whether they're I'm, men or women or, or juniors or, again, or when I'm know, over 50 or whatever I, again when i'm interviewed on television which is quite a lot and they keep on about you know the girls being muscular and all this that and the other and i said well you know uh, as far as i'm concerned they have the choice to do that yeah but they haven't got the, the uh, choice to uh, expect the public to accept it yeah it's a fair point it's um, a fair point and personally, I don't like it anyway. So, and I, I was the one who instigated that we should, uh, if possible, not have physique girls. Yeah. Because they were getting so um, out of the ordinary uh, mm. as, as far as feminine goes. Yeah. And the other thing was that, that the judges were told many times in the past that if we're looking at a physique girl, we're still looking for a feminine yeah. type of uh, athlete. Yeah. And not something that looked like a, a guy in a bikini. Yeah, which, and I which suppose being a bit harsh. Well, but that's the fact. Yeah, I mean, I guess if our if our top male competitor yeah. and our top female competitor are very very similar. I mean, you know, take take Dave Titterton for example. Yes. He won our Pro Universe yes. last night. Yeah. If you put him in a bikini, uh, that doesn't necessarily make him a great women's no, physique no, competitor no, or a great no, women's no. Uh, t- uh, figure competitor. Um, you know, there, there are certain qualities for male and female athletes that, that need to be, I guess, understood. Um, and possibly in, in, in years gone by, it's the, the lines have been a bit blurred, but I think uh, going forward, we've got a great opportunity now to streamline the classes again and, and put everything into perspective and make sure that everyone, every athlete around the world knows that when they come to do their class, this is what there is expected of them. From a judging perspective and from an athlete's perspective, and I mean, rest. in my position as the guy that has to go out and get the sponsorship, it's uh, extremely difficult, if not impossible, to try and sell uh, some girl that looks like some male yeah. in, a, in a bikini. Yeah, I know that sounds very uh, strong, but. Uh, you know, you have to face up to the fact that uh, 99% of the people that I'm trying to get sponsorship from uh, literally look at that and, and can't accept it. Yeah. Um, because they're not like us, they're not into the sport. Yeah. So they're just putting their money and sponsoring the sport. So it's uh, it's a known fact uh, the world over that uh, if you've got pretty girls, uh, companies will be interested. Yeah. Just like pretty girls are always uh, portrayed in uh, newspapers to sell newspapers. Mm. Uh, and it's just a fact of life. Um, it's not a prejudice against the other girls, but it's just a fact of life. So Dave Titterton was our professional Mr. Universe last night, and he's over there with his yes. family. Yeah. He's coming in here. Yeah. Um, that's obviously a, a fantastic win. I, I had uh, thought that Dave would do very well. He's a fantastic athlete and, a, and, a, and an absolute gentleman. Um, where do you see the, the pro division going in the next few years? Well, I, I can't see why it can't be as successful as it was last night and, and even improve on that. Yep. Uh, and with the type of athlete that we've just voted um, as the professional winner, which is a very pleasing physique, um, 
if, if that's what we're looking for, yep. I, I, I can't see that we shouldn't improve. Well, I think certainly now that we've got, uh, you know, 20 guys yes. who are all world world champions and universe champions, yes. and that's really important for us. Every single person on that stage last night was at some point in time a uh, the best bodybuilder in the world. So we don't have national qualifiers to give out pro cards. We give our pro cards to our Mr. Universes and our Mr. Worlds. Um, so you're always guaranteed to get a top lineup. You know, it, it was it's a lineup that would stand in, in any professional lineup. Um, and the good news is I've got it sponsored for next year. That's it. That's it. So you know we're 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 already twelve months yeah, ahead now. So yeah. again, it's 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 early days, but um, I think things are looking very very positive. So, any uh, any final words for the people around the world? Well, I, I hope that uh, what we're doing is appreciated by people. You know, um, and the people who are not initiated with what we're doing. I hope that they'll uh, give us a fair crack of the whip. All right. Well. You heard it here first. Give us a fair crack of the whip and hopefully we'll whip them into shape. Okay. <laughs> All right, thanks, Jim. Thank you.